Well, I have just finished pruning the boxwood. You can see I've got my tarp down and the clippings there. I'm just getting ready to clean it all up, but I thought I would give you kind of a circumnavigation around the entirety of the potage. So excuse my camera work if it's a little bit rocky. Um, some of you have asked what my design influence was, and I was influenced by the very fabulous garden designer, Rosemary Vary, and she had a wonderful, it's, it's still there, she has passed, but a wonderful garden at Barnsley House in the Cotswolds in the UK, and years ago we went and visited it, and I promptly came back and it was my design inspiration. Now hers is massive, of course, and mine is scaled to just the size of my property. But what it is, is two stylized hearts that face one another with a circle in the middle and then punctuated on the east and the west ends by some boxwood balls. And let me back up a little bit and show you. This is the view from my husband's office, or the studio as we call it. Not a bad view. So there's a set of French doors that come out, and this is what greets you. And when we moved in, none of this was here. So I put in the little fence because it's like a separate garden room right behind the studio. And I put a fence in on this side and I framed it. They're, they uh, mirror one another, the short fences. And I planted all of this myself. Um, one gallon boxwoods that were about 12 to 15 inches apart. And if I had it to do all over again, I probably would have used a different kind of boxwood, a variety that maybe didn't grow quite so quickly as this does, requiring a lot of pruning to keep it looking this neat and tidy. But this wintergreen is just beautiful. It's glossy, it always looks fresh, it's wonderful in the winter, and it is very, heat and cold and drought tolerant. It has taken a really bad hit in the past during an inordinately hot August where huge sections of it burned and it came back. So it is tough. This year, some of you have asked, is it too hot in August to prune the boxwood? And sometimes in August it is too hot to prune because that forces new growth to flush out and that, that new growth is not tempered to the heat. But we've had for Oklahoma a very mild summer, one of the coolest on record, unbelievably. And we have had fairly good rainfall. So because of that, I have been a little bit more liberated in my ability to prune it and and prune it at this time of year and we're getting ready to do some photo shoots back here so I wanted it to look its best. Now in the past it was pretty easy to access the four quadrants. They're partitioned by a small brick walkway so I can get in there and reach on either side. Um, and it used to be very easy to access all four quadrants. Uh, now not so much because it's grown so much and the boxwood balls on the west end have practically grown together. Now let me see if I can come over here and work my way around what is the north side past this Arizona Cypress topiary and past all of this rosemary topiary back here. I'm getting ready to do a lot of things with rosemary topiary. So it's looking beautiful right now. Now on this end of the border that runs parallel to the boxwood hedge, I've got two conical wintergreen 
boxwoods that I have yet to prune. So I'll finish those today. And again, it's all about the, how they perform as punctuation points at either end. So this would be the north side of this potager garden room. This faces south and that would be looking west and this then looks south. That little cabinet in the distance that you see that is where I keep some garden tools and insecticides and things like that. And you can see that I've just finished the prune. On the outside, I can use a tarp to catch the clippings, but on the inside, because of what's growing in the interior, that is really not possible. So I'll go in there and rake those up and get those out of there because I don't want them in case they're diseased or whatever to break down. Now in the future I'm going to do a long um, deep dive on LVTV into boxwood and boxwood care because all of us who adore boxwood as I do are concerned about boxwood blight, spider mite, um, and other issues that are singular to growing boxwood. Now let me show you over here. You can see that there is a blank spot right there. And that's because if you look in the distance there is a golden euonymus fortuni and I had at each corner of the access points I have had balls of that golden fortuni. Well this year I've decided I decided just to take them out. They were getting too big and they sometimes have a problem with scale. So I just dug that one out, which it was abutted up against the circle in the center. And I took it out and that boxwood will then fill in and recover and I'll have a little bit more accessibility and a cleaner look. Now in the focal point in the center, I have had different things. I've had, some of you may have seen the Weeping Pussy Willow I had in the interior. I've had huge stands of alliums over time. I've had a scarecrow. And right now I have what may be my favorite thing because it's just a little bit more subtle and sophisticated. I've just got an olive urn with an olive tree in it that let me see if I can get a close up. You look carefully. I don't know if you can see them or not. There's some tiny olives on there. And I love, as I've said, ad nauseum, I love that blue green color palette that is unique to Mediterranean plants. And It is pretty much the inspiration this year for this, what I'm now calling my Mediterranean border with figs and guava and lots of rosemary and scented geraniums. It's a very, very fragrant border. And there's getting to be lots of color in here, far more color. It has yet to erupt, but it will, barring some unforeseen weather apocalypse. And that's just tall flocks in the background. So when I'm out here working, if you see in the distance, there's a little fort, a little tree house in the back. And I can hear the kiddos play. Now here, here is a funny story I have told many, many times. Um, these are old houses. They are close together. And in the back at this house behind me, there used to be another fort back there. And I was working in my garden back here in the Potager once, and I could hear voices. 
and I was kind of hidden. They couldn't see me, but I could see them. And there were four women up standing up. They had just been to a meeting. They were all in their ladies go to lunch, best clothes. And they were standing in the fort <laughs> and they were looking down into the backyard because they, they kindly said, well, if her front yard is so beautiful, I wonder what her backyard looks like. And so they wanted to see it and they got up into the fort. And I thought that was hysterical, and I also was afraid to make my presence known for fear that they might um, <laughs> they might tumble in their heels out of the wooden fort. So there is a little circuit of the boxwood hedge in the potage. And once I get everything all cleaned up and the light is a little bit softer, we'll do another round maybe in the evening. And here are those pots of sunshine ligustrum that I just planted with that beautiful purslane to greet people as they go into the potage. You guys have a great day all. Thanks for taking this little tour with me.